Montez Alexander. Shabbat for three. Bingo! Carter will get it for the win. Got it! Did it! He is hard to believe. Here's Troy. Yes! The Magic of 360 turn with the dribble. Magic down the middle. Gets underneath the Worthy. Slam dunk. Third in the corner. Double fake. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Dime Dropper for another edition of our 2021-22 NBA season previews. As I said, we are going to other content creators and trying to find authentic fans of a team to give their honest takes on their own individual ball clubs. For this one, I'm returning the favor. He had me on his show recently on Instagram. On Instagram, It's a Raptors fan. It's Freddie Gonzaga Jr. from the Freddie NBA show. Freddie... Thanks for coming on to talk Raptors for me today. Yeah, of course, man. Appreciate the invitation, man. Can't wait. So, you know, let's just start with how long you've been a Raptors fan. You're actually uh, from out here in the West Coast. You're not actually from Canada, um, but you became a Raptors fan, and you seem to, when I talk to you, really seem to know and follow your team well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I'm very passionate about the Raptors. Uh, I've been a Raptors fan, to be realistic and super honest, since 2017. I know people probably saying, Who, what was your team before? I didn't have a team before that. I was just a Chris Paul fan when he was with the Clippers because that, that was pretty fun watching Chris Paul with the Clippers. But I've been watching DeMar DeRozan since he got drafted in 2009, and now I'll never forget all the ups and downs he's been through and the way he uh, made the Raptors a better team. Without DeMar, the Raptors wouldn't even be in the conversation of, oh, yeah, top five teams in the East or top ten, you know. So I've been a Raptor fan since 2017, yeah, before Kawhi actually came, yeah. So let's talk about last year. It was a really weird year for Toronto. They didn't play in Toronto. They played in Florida. You know, I'm looking at the games missed. Pascal Siakam missed 16 games, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Van Vliet missed 20. And then obviously the trade, Norman Powell going to Portland for Gary Trent Jr. Kyle Lowry missed 26. And OG Ananobi missed 29. So a lot of injuries for Toronto. It was a very weird season. They finished the season, I believe, 27 and 45. So Kyle Lowry's out the door. He was, you know, in the conversation for Raptor GOAT in terms of what he's done for the franchise long term. How do you feel about Lowry going out the door and how much do you think it's going to hurt the team? Especially, I just found out Goran Dragic was coming this, uh, to Toronto. I, I totally forgot about that. And I think that'll be a nice little uh, replacement but obviously it's not the exact player that Kyle Lowry was. So talk about losing a player so important. Oh uh, yeah. Lowry leaving to, um, to uh, Miami. My reaction was I was heartbroken. I didn't feel like it was real when I heard on ESPN radio that he was going to sign with Miami. Just, I mean, it kind of broke my heart, but you know what? I appreciate his career. Like he mostly played his whole career with Toronto. So he played there since 2012 because he got traded from the Rockets. So I appreciate all those years that Kyle Lowry, especially in 2019, he really was the Buddha. I mean, taking charges, stepping up, being a contributor to Kawhi. I mean, I'll never forget the 2019 playoffs. Kyle Lowry was just a monster. I mean, without him, I think the Raptors – I mean, I know everybody says Kawhi did this, Kawhi did that, Kawhi did everything. But if it wasn't for Lowry on the defensive end, I don't think the Raptors would have been, you know, winning that chip in 2019. So, I appreciate Lowry. Uh, shout out Kyle Lowry. Um, I was heartbroken. And I think this year is going to hurt us a lot in the defensive end, I'll say, because Goran Dragic's defense is not that great. I mean, Goran Dragic is a pretty good offensive player. Like, he could attack the rim. He's a pretty good slasher. I mean, he could hit a p couple threes here and there. But he's not going to be like Lowry, to be honest. I mean, in the defensive end, not really. I think we're going to struggle on defense offensively, in the, especially in the perimeter because Lowry used to stop shooters. And, and now that Lowry's gone, it's just like – I mean, Fred Van Vliet's a good defender, but Goran Dragic, he's not that great at defense. So, I think the defense is going to be a lot of question marks this year. And, I mean, hopefully it doesn't get too horrible this year with defense. So. Okay, yeah, was, so we see, obviously, you say you're losing some leadership with Lowry, some defense, so definitely a big loss, Goran Dragic coming in. Let's, you mentioned Fred Van Vliet. Let's talk about him. He's actually one of the more likable players, at least for me, in the league. He was so big during that 2019 playoff run, had a great season in 2020. Uh, last year, missed 20 games. He still had his highest scoring season, averaging 19.6 points a game. But his efficiency, I'm just looking at it today, I actually didn't even know this, only 39%, which for today's NBA to shoot under 40 for, honestly, shooting under 45% is uh, rare for these great players in today's NBA with the 
open looks that they get and a lot of good looks they get with the spacing. But to shoot under 40%, can you give us more context on that? Did Freddie Van Vliet just have a bad season? Was he bothered with injuries? And how do you think he's going to be in this upcoming season? Yeah, um, 2020-21 season was really weird for the Raptors. A lot of uh, COVID situations, injuries, and we were not even playing at Toronto. We were playing at Tampa Bay out of all of the places, you know. So it was a really, really weird season. So, and I, and I understand why the Raptors struggled, and I, I'm not mad that they struggled, you know. It was just really weird. And I think, you know, missing a lot of games really affected, affected the Raptors. So that's why they lost a lot of games, and they, they didn't win that much. So I think this year, uh, Freddie V, man, I think this is a good chance. I think this is a chance to show that he could carry a team, and he could be a, a leader, like a replacement over Kyle Lowry. That's what I'm looking forward to, to seeing on Fred Van Fleet. I just can't wait to see him play because I know he could shoot the three ball. He could uh, uh, be a good leader. He could pass the ball. Him and Pascal Siakam have good chemistry. So I can't wait to see. I mean, this is his chance to prove a lot of haters wrong because I know people always hate on uh, Fred Van Vliet because he's undrafted. He just got lucky that the Raptors found him and yada, yada, yada. All these, you know, hateful things. And you know what? I think this year he's going to prove a lot of haters wrong. I could feel it. I could feel it. So that's what you – I like how you mentioned – Pascal, because that was the next guy I wanted to ask you about. Siakam, he had a great season in 2020, established himself as an all-star. Last year, he went from 22 points a game to 21. Uh, efficiency around the same, three-point percentage slightly dropped. It seemed as though teams are starting to figure him out in ways. Everybody you know, knows that he, he loves to go to that spin move. Uh, his mid-range game can be a little still unreliable. Uh, his post game, at least in the playoffs against the Celtics, Jalen Brown, made his footwork and fundamentals look very poor. Uh, Siakam, you know, took a lot of criticism last year. He obviously missed 16 games, but obviously he'll probably have a point to prove being back in Toronto this season. What do you think is the expectation for Spicy P? Because he's the leader of this team. I'm guessing he's the franchise player now. Do you think he'll be able to lead you back into playoff spots or play-in spots? Um, Pascal Siakam, yeah, he's been kind of up and down. He hasn't been consistent like the way – he has been, especially in the bubble, he was doing really bad. He he just, something was missing from him. I think they already knew because he does that one spin move that like you said. Yeah, he used to do it a lot, and he used to make buckets doing that spin move. So my my question for him, for Pascal, is, like, will he really, like, go off this year, or will he be, like, up and down this year? Because a lot of – he got injured too. So, yeah, so, I mean, I, I have faith in Pascal Siakam. I'll give him another chance. I know a lot of Raptor fans were saying in the, during the 2020 uh, NBA playoffs, like, oh, yeah, let's trade Siakam because he didn't do good. He was so terrible. You know, honestly, I know it was a bubble. I mean, the bubble was a really weird environment. So some players had a tough time, especially for Paul George. I mean, he had a tough time. So, I mean, Pascal Siakam was not the only, the only player that struggled to stay in the bubble or, like, get used to the environment, you know. So yeah. I, think for the, I think the expectations for Pascal Siakam this year is for him to – just go off, like step up, at least contribute, and at least average 20 points. At least for me, as long as he average 20 points, I think that's pretty good enough for me. And I hope he makes an all-star team, but I don't know if he is. But I just want him to go off this year and at least be consistent and hopefully not too much injuries. That's that's my expectation as a Raptor fan for Pascal Siakam. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if he can improve on that. Last year, I, I'm sorry, two years ago, I think it was his career high, around 22 points a game. If he can get to 23 or even more, that would obviously be, you know, a career year and – hopefully I think for your guys' sake, help you get into those spots. So before we, I wanted to ask you about where you think you're actually going to finish. I wanted to talk about some depth pieces and obviously you got Gary Trent jr. Um, what did you, he's obviously a sniper, but his efficiency, at least it looks like in the stats with the Raptors I'm looking at right now, only shot 39 and a half percent, which is a little, again, weird. Um, Gary Trent jr. Though full season under his belt, full training camp now coming up with Toronto how big of an impact do you think he's going to make? Or do you think he's going to start? Is it going to be Fred Van Vliet, Trent, Siakam, OG, and uh, who you guys Kimber. think start? Uh, usually. Oh, Kim Birch? Okay. Kim Birch, Kim Birch, yeah. Over. yeah, I know Aaron Baines didn't end up being a good Marcus Gasol replacement at all. Um, so talk to me about the, the wings. Gary Trent Jr. and a guy that's set to have a huge season this year, who I have as my maybe my pick for most improved, OG Ananobi. So let me know what you think of those two guys. Oh, Gary Trent Jr. Um, he was not a bad replacement for Norman Powell, actually. I, honestly, when I heard about Norman Powell getting traded in the 2020-21 season, I was kind of really sad, bummed out. But I know the Raptors wanted to do some new changes. So the new changes have been pretty impressive, actually. He's a pretty good shooter, actually. I know, like you said, very low efficiency, the efficiency which is kind of surprising. But I, my expectation for uh, Gary Trent Jr. this season is to just keep shooting those, those threes because he's a good shooter, actually. And 
hopefully he'll average at least like 15, 20 points, I would say. I mean, I know he's not like a James Harden and like none of those crazy players, but I know he, I want him to contribute. That's all that matters to me. As long as he hits like two, three games a game, I'm good with that. And then for OG Anobi, I love OG Anobi, man. Very underrated. Everybody hates OG Anobi. Nobody talks about him. His defense is so intense. Like a great lockdown defender could lock down anyone when he wants to. And he's very athletic. Like he's just, he has length. I mean, my expectation is, you know what? I want to see OG Anobi be, I mean, get most improved. I mean, any Raptor player, I mean, Gary Trent, between Gary Trent and uh, OG Ananobi. So I expect OG to, like, just go off. And, I mean, I'm expecting him to get at least five steals and at least one or two blocks a game. I mean, he's his defense is so great. I recommend to watch his defensive highlights. Just really good, really good. I mean, you guys have some good uh, wing depth at, for, in terms of defense with Siakam, OG Ananobi, Gary Trent. I've seen him play defense, and he's no slouch at all. He plays hard. So that'll be interesting, you know, to see. And Van Vliet's a fighter, too. So it'll be interesting to see if you guys can build identity on defense. So let me ask you this. What do you think is – do you think there's a way you guys need to play? What strengths you want to go to? What do you want to see out of this Raptors team on the court? And then I'll ask you about how you think they're going to finish. But what do you want to see about them on the court? Is there anything specific you want to see about their style? I want to see uh, intense defense, like, because I know a lot of people are saying, uh, there's no Kyle Lowry. Oh, man, they're going to be worse and, you know, talking all this uh, smack. <laughs> so I want them to prove that they could play defense, that they could be at least a top five, top ten defensive team in the NBA. If they do that, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, that's what brings me joy, just seeing defense. And, and I, I, want, I just want to see Fred Van Fleet just have a really going, like, just going off, like, more than ever, you know, because now that Lowry's gone and now that, I mean, Goran Dragic is a pretty good leader, but I don't know. I don't I mean, he's okay. I mean, uh, Goran Dragic, to me, he's, he's not a bad uh, offensive player, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I just expect Goran at least to contribute, but I mean, I just, I don't know. He's not a, I thought he was going to leave Miami because they were talking about that Goran might not join Toronto, but I guess he wants to join Toronto, I guess. But, but what I expect is Fred Van Fleet to go off and Pascal Siakam to at least contribute and hopefully not get injured a lot this season because he's been getting injured a lot. And yeah. I just, yeah. Oh, and then I just yeah for um, and then I just want to see Scotty Barnes, the new rookie. Yeah, I was we gonna got. ask you that was my, that question I was gonna ask you about the rookies. People are talking a lot about Scotty Barnes out of Florida State. Uh, people are talking about you know his defense and just how he's gonna make a big impact this year. What do you what are your thoughts on him? Early looks. Um, I saw his high school and his college highlights. He's a very he's kind of, he's like OG and Anobi for real. They're like tw- they look like twins kind of because his defense is so intense. Like he knows how to get steals and just in transition just boom just dumps the ball so that's what i expect um scotty Barnes, at least um i'll say average at least 15 points or i mean 13 or somewhere around there you know i, I can't wait to see him play he's really exciting he's very good at defense he's like og anobi style you know and i, I really wanted to see get rookie of the year but i know everybody's choosing kate cunningham and jillian green of course but, mm-hmm. but I, I mean i want him i want scotty Barnes to make a surprise that's what i really want to see for rookie of the year and the conversation of it you know so that's my expectation let me ask you to end it off. Where do you see your Raptors finishing, honestly? That's a really good question, Darian. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Um, Last year, you finished 12. Um, yeah, I know. We were, yeah, we kind of struggled last season. Yeah. Um, um, I Hopefully, a bounce back. I mean, I pray that it's a bounce back. Um, at least, to be realistic, like a seventh seed or the most, the eighth seed. That's, yeah. that's my expectation because I know there's a lot of good teams in the East out there. I mean, I know the Philadelphia is kind of mm, up and down. Boston's up there. Indiana has been getting better. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That's another interesting one I've been going back and forth with. The Pacers or the Raptors, who do you think is going to finish with a better record, barring major injury? Um, I mean, I'm a Raptor fan. I'm not trying to be biased, but I hope my Raptors <laughs> get the better record than the Pacers. But, man, TJ Warren, DeMontis Sabonis. I mean, Karis is going to be coming back too, and Brogdon's still there, so they got a pretty good team there. Yeah, I can't disrespect Indiana. They they really got a really interesting team, especially TJ McConnell, a great steel yeah. leader, like very good at defense. So I think it's going to be pretty close between those two teams. I'll say though, they might because they're both like very underrated. They're, nobody nobody talks about Indiana or Toronto that much anymore now. So so yeah, hopefully we'll be better than Indiana, but it's going to be close though. I think my expectation is at least get the seventh seed. And then the most highest, I'll say, like the sixth or fifth seed. That's about, what do you about think, it, though. I don't see it. I was going to say, what do you think is the lowest you can finish? Besides, the play-in without tournament. Without major injuries. Without major injuries. I'll say the play-in tournament, the most, that's the lowest for me. Like the, like the tenth spot? Like that's the last spot in the play-in? 
Yeah. 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 I, that's what I have you guys in my personal ranking. I know like a lot of Raptors fans probably think that's too low. I'd expect, but I just, I don't know. I had a hard time looking at these Eastern conference teams and saying that I guarantee the Raptors going to be better than them. I had the Raptors over the Hornets and some friends I have that like the Hornets were giving me some, uh, some shit for that. Because uh, Lamella Ball, you know, Lamella Ball, they got an exciting team. You know, they came, they had a better record than you guys last year. But I just feel as though OG Ananobi's jump this year and a little bit more health. I think last year was just such a weird year. Being back in the six is going to be big. I mean, that home court advantage was not felt last year. So I think, I think it's going to be a better year for Toronto, and I see them getting back in the playing spots. But let people know where they can find you before this ends. Follow Freddie Gonzaga on Instagram. Let them know everything. Okay, so my Instagram is the Freddy NBA Show two one three. You can follow me there. I do NBA updates and I do uh, po- uh, stories about you know trying to get back to the community too. So check it out, and I recommend to check out my NBA podcast. Darian, tell me, tell them about your my NBA podcast. What do you think about it? It's good. I mean, Freddie goes through the. It's like a nice weekly recap. I don't. At least he's had he's had me on a couple times during the playoffs, and just goes through various topics around the league. So if you want to get your NBA fix. Find Freddie on Instagram. Yeah. So my podcast is called the Freddie NBA Show. It's on SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. So it's on four platforms. So you can check them out. Any of those four, recommend it. It's very professional. And I know Darian's been a guest before, and he's he was a really good guest. So Appreciate it. You've been a good guest, too. I appreciate you for coming on. Good luck to your rappers this season, man. Yeah, same to you, man. Good luck to your Clippers, man. <laughs>